take, say for example, a retail business. If you're a retail operator, what are some key scores that you can observe and look at on a regular basis that will give you an indication of how well your business is going? And ideally, you've got a benchmark figure at the moment. So being a retailing business, it'd be really great to ensure that you know the number of sales or transactions that happen on a, on a day-to-day, week-to-week basis. Your average dollar sale is important. Perhaps your conversion rate, which could be the number of visitors to your store, as opposed to the number of people who actually bought. That's your conversion rate. We can give you an indication of whereabouts your sales team could have some improvements, or if they're doing really well. Maybe the number of new clients is an important one for you as well, because that gives you an indication, are you just having existing clientele come back, or you're actually building your clientele base, and you have a target on that as well. And perhaps it's you know inquiries. So that's an example of a retail business. If you're something like a landscape gardening business, so a little bit different to a retail business, let's have a look at what would be some key scores to measure there. The number of inquiries would be an important one. Okay, how many people are actually wanting our services or inquiring about our services? I would then say an important one would be the number of quotations that you actually give. So the number of new clients or inquiries the number of quotations that you gave, and also the number of new jobs, which might be the conversion rate, which is important to have a look at as well. The number of of the average dollar sale, or the average dollar uh, per job, or the average sale cost per job is another important one as well, because all of those indicate your future revenues. If you're having looking at something like a service-based business, uh, let's say, for example, a hairdresser or a, a massage therapist. From a service perspective, number of inquiries is important. Number of new clients, which could be part of your conversion rate, which is the number of new clients divided by the number of inquiries to give you a percentage factor. How many sales and also what's your average dollar sale? There's some key ones that if you put together within a formula I can give you an indication of the revenue that's coming along. So. My recommendation is pick just three, possibly four, key scores to track. No more than that to start off with. Let's keep it simple. Keep it simple and straightforward. The old KISS principle always works. And start tracking some of these and also, obviously, the dollars that hit the bank account. Now, the key thing to remember here is you can't measure what you don't track and you can't manage what you don't measure. So start off by tracking these then you can measure them and according to what your average is or your benchmark level, and then you can manage the outcome around that. So there's an indication of what you can measure. The next question is perhaps how do I measure it? Well, I talked about track, measure and manage. So how do I measure it? And again, this can be really simple. And it doesn't necessarily have to be you, the business owner, who's doing all the measuring or the tracking. Get your team involved with this. Help them understand the importance of tracking these key scores and particularly you know, our revenue on a regular basis because that helps with the profitability of the business. And if they see that if the business is more profitable, ideally they'll get some benefit from that as well. They'll want to help you with this on a, on a regular basis. So how do you track? Well, let's have a look. It could start off by just being having a piece of paper with some columns. Okay. Adding up my average dollar sale, and by the way, your average dollar sale is the, the total value of your sales divided by the number of transactions or number of sales gives you the average. And there is always an average. Some people will say, well, my sales value vary from 50 cents to you know, several thousand dollars. There is always an average. Work with that average and then obviously aim to improve your average dollar sale. The number of sales or transactions, it could just be a piece of paper with some columns and you just start off by writing some figures. That's as simple as it needs to be. I wouldn't worry too much about getting fancy spreadsheets happening to start off with. Get the fundamentals going and then start working on some spreadsheets. But if you're very comfortable with spreadsheets and that's the way you like to work, fantastic. Have some some set sheets that you may have by the phone which helps you track the number of inquiries. Have a process which tracks and and you always ask for the names and addresses or the contact details of new clients to help you get an indication of that as well. So how to track, get your team involved, 
Talk to your business mastery buddies, ask how they're tracking their key scores, and once you've got that, the numbers starting to come in, then you can have a look at a way to collate it and manage it uh, in a simple way. But just start off by collecting to start off with. And you might ask the question, well, well, how often do I need to look at this information? Again, that may depend on the business. However, let me ask you this. You don't want to be focusing on the score all the time. As we know what happens in a sporting game is all, all the players do is focus on the scoreboard. They're not focusing on what actually produces a great result. So the scoreboard is there to refer to, but not to focus on. So as a referral point, let's have a look at some scores are looked at on a almost day-to-day, -day, in some cases, hourly basis. I'll give you an example. A retail business, most retail businesses have a look at the end of every day as to what their average dollar sales, and I'm talking about successful retail businesses here. On an average day, on a day their average dollar sale, number of transactions, you know, perhaps new clients or new inquiries. How are we going? Because they can impact that on a, on a, on a, on a, on a regular basis by looking at what's going on on a day-to-day -day basis. As, say, a landscape gardening business, you may have a look back over the week. How are we tracking? If you're a, 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 a business that looks at efficiencies, and I'll give you an example. McDonald's is a, is a business that runs on efficiencies. And not that I go to McDonald's a lot, but if you go into a McDonald's store and you have a look above where the drive through is, it actually tells you the average waiting time per customer in line at McDonald's. And not just for that store, it also rates you, or rates that store, ranks it with all the other stores in Australia. It's amazing. So their scorecard and they're monitoring how long it takes for an average client to, or customer to wait in line in the drive through is something they monitor ongoingly. A landscape gardening business may monitor it on a weekly basis, but I probably wouldn't leave it too much longer than a weekly basis to see how you're actually travelling, particularly if you're really wanting to push revenues up. Picture yourself again as a football coach in an AFL situation. The coach looks and refers to the scoreboard you know, every two or three minutes, particularly addresses concerns or you know, rewards great behaviour on a quarterly basis. And on a quarterly basis, they have a look at, okay, we're on the scoreboard, let's have a look, how do we go? Tackles, handballs, kicks, number of uh, pushes inside the forward 50, number of unforced errors, how are we going compared to the opposition? Remember, the opposition in your business is your break-even point. So, have a look at what's going to work for yourself, but get comfortable with referring to it on a regular basis.